form there. Absolutely, right. yeah, it's yeah. good tune. Good, good. On XFM 104.9, Vicky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington, more importantly. Carl, come on then. Right. I need some education. I no, need, it's uh, Rockbusters. I, rock I need education, I need I some know, education. I know, I know, you know what? We've promised the Rockbusters. Educating Ricky, I will be ditching before Christmas. Why? <sighs> it will be going. Why? Because there's nothing it's, out there. It's just struggling. I was thinking on the way in today, I can either do, um, doing something more with Steve, because we've done, like, the Ricky angle. Either yeah. we can do, uh um, Educating Steve? No, either like a, a bit of a call my bluff type thing, but it's like a con merchant and I have to like trick you. Okay. Right, con so merchant, I'm the I like con it. And you're the other merchant. And then, mm. or I was thinking something that you just do, do some work and you have a moan for a bit. Okay. And that's a bit, that, that's like a wine merchant that you just like <laughs> whine on about something. <laughs> Uh, again, just, I, I just, the I pun comes first with uh, yeah, you, doesn't it? Yeah. It works like that first. Yeah. That's like, uh, okay. I told you I'd come up with a couple of sitcoms for me. Go on. One is I've got an imaginary navy. Called Merchant's Navy. Since yeah. it's, 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 I've got yeah. a navy. In the, and the premises, I've got a navy. Yeah. And another one is I live in. And that's as far as he's got as well. Yeah, that's Just all I come up with. If you've got any ideas there, uh, Carl, yeah. that'd be much appreciated. Yeah. Another one is I live in quite a salubrious part of North London, and that's called Merchant of Little Venice. And I live in Little Venice. Uh, I, again, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, but uh, mm. any ideas, Carl? You know, I've got one where I play an Italian waiter, and it's called Shut Up a Gervais. Yep. That's so, really we're, we're, that's the one we're working on there, actually, to follow up with the office. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah. We'll do something with that. Yeah. But <laughs> at the moment, we've got Rockbusters. Okay. okay. So, uh, these are mine. Um, number one, you've been dunking that for too long. That's LB. You've right, been so dunking that too long. Oh, God, that's too easy. That's yeah, too I easy. I always tease them, don't I? Give them something to make them feel like they're gonna win something, and then I, I hit them hard with a tricky one. But it doesn't make sense. Yeah, go on. So, the first one, so that's the cryptic clue for a band or an artist. Their initials are LB, and yeah. the cr cryptic clue, you've been dunking that for too long. Yeah. So that's the first one. Second one, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub, because the table ain't big enough. Right? <laughs> could be an old artist, could be a new one, could be a band. What's the initials? Uh, FD. Alright? F D. You won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. And the final one, uh well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. Right? Yeah. That's that's the third cryptic clue, the initials being G K. Right? Yeah. Well I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. They're the three clues. All you gotta do is email in Ricky <laughs> That's great! That's genius! Which one? The last one. Alright. That yeah, is genius. That's the anything. best one you've ever done. Alright. Uh, Ricky.Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Uh, I'm in the middle one. Dot UK. Okay. Email in them three answers, you win the stuff. We have still got educating Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on, I'll just have one, let's have one. No, let's I'll, give, I'll give you the titles. Give me the titles, yeah, got you. Yeah. Right, you've got, um, three bits of info that's gone on in the world. Yeah. Or, uh, or possibly sort of, sort of uh, information. Older times. Older Never times go further back in the 17th century, do we? Well, uh, no. Let's, let's 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 make it clearer. There's three bits of information <laughs> that people have put on the net, <laughs> yeah. whether or not they're true. Well, <laughs> yeah. Different issue. And that he still gets it a little bit wrong oh, in translation well, yeah. and sort of adds bits to it. <laughs> yeah. Go right, on. So we've got. Uh, I love it when he plays out those historical dialogues. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the 15th century <laughs> where he goes. So anyway, a bloke says to himself, <laughs> "I'll tell you what I'll do." <laughs> so the horse isn't happy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go on. Right, so the three that you've, uh, you've got to pick from, you've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. let's get your kit on, we're off down the butchers, yeah! Uh, we've right. got, um, wash up with you. <laughs> Wash up with Wash you. Wash up with you! <laughs> ah! Yeah! And, yeah. Uh, the last one, I couldn't really think of a, a good title for, so yeah. it's just, uh, <laughs> why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something? <laughs> <laughs> We've got to make oh. this into a book. This is it's my, it's mine, Steve's favourite bit of the whole show. This is what we do this show for now: educating Ricky. Yeah. Go for it, Carl. You said that learning can't be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go for the one. What's the one about the butcher going down the butcher shop? You've got uh, get your kit on. We're off down the butchers. Yeah. You going for that one? Yeah. Well, do you know the saying? Oh, um, <laughs> don't let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. 
you know, do you know what it means? Yeah, well, don't give away a secret. Right. Well, do you know it came about? No. No. Well, uh, ages ago, <laughs> before, like, <laughs> Ages course, ago. Before, 17th century? Yeah, before, like... Yeah, yeah, 17 is good. Yeah. Before, like, you know, proper butchers and Jewhursts and supermarkets and that, you used to get these blokes who oh, right. who sold meat, right? right? Butcher, butchers, they were called then, I think. Yeah, yeah, but the difference was they didn't stay in the same place they moved about, right? So they'd turn up on a street corner, right. and you'd have, like, loads of carrier bags of, like... Carrier uh, bags? <laughs> yeah, with, you know, with meat in and that, and people would Plastic be like, carrier bags. Yeah, yeah with whatever. mobile butcher on them. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, uh, <laughs> Had an email would... address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. People went, right, yeah, I need some meat, right, so they'd, uh, <laughs> they'd go up to this bloke, and uh, say, what have you got? And he'd say, well, I've got a, got a, you know, you can have a, a bag full of pig, or you can have a, whatever, a bag full of chicken, whatever. Yeah. And they'd go, yeah, how much? And they'd go, oh, you know, call it, call it a fiver, whatever. Yeah. And um, they'd, they'd buy them, and to, to make more money, they didn't always fill the bag with what they said was in it. Oh, and yeah, I thought that might be the case. Right? Yeah. So what did they, they used to do- they put a in there? Yeah. But I don't see why- what- Okay, so sometimes they would put a cat in the bag- they put And a cat pretend in it the was bag. chicken or whatever else. Yeah, so- but why was a cat any cheaper than a chicken? Cause cats are wandering around the streets, aren't the chickens aren't. So they- so they'd get a chicken, they put a chicken on the top so that when they look in it they'd go, yeah, that's alright. Got a bag full of chicken, they'd get home to make the dinner. Yeah. And they'd be like, what are we having tonight? And they'd go, well, you'll never guess. <laughs> and they'd, they'd have like, you know, well you can have a chicken leg and, you know, but it wouldn't got, be, it would be a cat. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have to defrost a pizza. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Did they mind that they were eating cat then, in, the, in those days? He didn't say. He just was saying about the saying, uh, don't let the cat out of the bag. It's like, you know, uh, if they see that, they're gonna go mad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mildly disappointed with this story. It's alright if it's true, but yeah, it's something about it, it's just... I want to know more. He always leaves yeah. it. Is it Carl doesn't quench your thirst for knowledge? He creates more. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, yeah, he's like the pot noodle of information. Yeah, do you know, I, I, he never. I want to go. I'm not nourished by it. It's like if, it's, if for every fact he tells me, there's ten others that spring yeah. up that yeah. I have to get clear. Well, so it was the people that were doing this. It was the it was the dodgy butchers that coined this phrase. Were they saying to each other, "Don't let the cat out the bag"? I <laughs> what I mean by that, Jack, is don't let them see the cat. Yeah, what yeah. we've stuffed in there. Yeah. Dodgy butcher. That's another phrase, isn't it? <laughs> so that's that's the first one. Uh, is that a euphemism or is it? Yeah, dodgy butcher. As his meat delivered around the back. Sure. So that's that's that one. So let's get your kit on. What was that then? It's a, a euphemism for uh, homosexuality. Okay. And meat, presumably, in that means different things. It doesn't. It, it's it's a word that is also a male would it, would bird. Would mean chicken or cat <laughs> necessarily in that context? <laughs> or well, I suppose it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carl's look, looks. Look at him. It, it, Carl looks at you like a cat. Yeah. Whenever we leave him behind, if we don't talk like straight at him and let him see our lips moving, mm. and it's you know monosyllabic and very very sad. Look, he's lost. He's lost in that conversation. There, he just drifted off, didn't you, Carl? No, I just was also thinking on animals and that something else I was going to use. Go on. Was um. Is this it, isn't a radio show, is it? I just suddenly caught something. This I is not. This that. is nothing. I told you that before. It's it's been bad today. No, but I mean it's the way that this casual way that it's like we, we almost have no regard for our listener, and I'm not proud of that. I just don't know what to do about it. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know how to do this properly. I I mean, we're just chatting here. I mean, it's only Anderson who's seen through us, and yeah. that surprises me that more people haven't. I mean, what are the figures like? Do people listen to this show? I'll find out for you. You keep saying that, but um, yeah, there's this parrot. And, uh, <laughs> apparently, it I mean, in... Rick, it's unique. <laughs> if nothing else. I mean, when you wake up with Woken tomorrow, <laughs> you're not even going to yeah. hear him start a line with there was this parrot. Go on, there was this parrot. Yeah, go on. And it can talk, and that someone's obviously. You know, tore it out how to speak and that, and mm. um, it flew away. Oh. And it's living in this church, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, people are at the church doing oh. hymns and that. And then Troubles brewing. In, bet in between if the hymns. If that parrot was owned by an old uh, miner who used to swear a lot, yeah. well, then the vicar is going to be is going to be really annoyed. That vicar, yeah. that vicar's going to go on. I just hope he stays quiet during <laughs> the vicar's sermons. Yeah, go on. Have you read it? 
No, go on. Have <laughs> you read it? No, go on, no, because that's, that's what happens, right? Go on, tell us, Carl. During, during the hymns, it's sort of effing and jeffing and stuff. Effing really. <laughs> and jeffing? Yeah. And everyone's like going, oh, you know, it's quite funny, really, you know, it doesn't know what it's doing. Everyone's yeah. having a laugh. Yeah. But it's causing a havoc at funerals. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this happen? Uh, uh not, and not years ago. John uh, was a much loved man. He was a wanker! Yeah. So, anyway, so that was another what story. What can you I... say about Uncle John? Bollocks! <laughs> Oh, Carl, I love, I love the fact that when you look at things, you go, that's interesting, a parrot that swears at funerals. That would be a And it stays with you. You see, for a simple man, you retain an awful lot of knowledge. It's just all rubbish. It's all you Do you know what I mean? If you just replaced all this rubbish with good stuff, yeah. you'd be an intellectual. Yeah. Really. Because, I mean, your, your attention is fantastic. Yeah. So, so I lose you again there, did I? So Was it the word retention? <laughs> We've still got, uh, wash up with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we play a record and do wash yeah, up with you? Yeah, yeah. We'll play a bit of Aqualunga. <laughs> Aqualunga! Alright, that's Aqualung. Uh, good time's gonna come, innit? Right, Carl, come on in, educating Ricky. So, don't let the cat out of the bag, that's where that uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. Comes from a crafty butcher. <laughs> right, go on in. So the next, uh, little headline is, uh, Wash up with you. Wash up with you. Go on. You want to know about that? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's a survey that they did. <laughs> survey that they did this week. They. Yeah. Some some university did some survey. Brilliant. Did a world test yeah. on washing up. Yeah. And uh, each country were given 140 pots to clean. <laughs> um, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Turkey were the slowest <sighs> at washing up. The Turks. Uh, it's not because the little fellas that work in the kitchens with no, is it? They can't reach. Spain. <laughs> Spain were the cleanest and the uh, Germans were pretty good as well, so. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> uh, honestly, Steve, I don't know where to start with that. I Look at his face. It was really light, right? We've had the parrot, right? These are the things that I found. Found the parrot. Right, I've told you about the dog in the car wash. Right, you didn't tell me about that, you said there's a car wash for a dog, that's all you told me. Yeah, but- The parrot, that's... you said there's a parrot, what? It's a problem at funerals. Yeah. That's nothing, that's nothing, that's nothing. And, Do you understand? And, uh- I, They used to eat cats. What else have we got? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. Why? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. No, I'm interested, why? Um, stop- <laughs> uh, <laughs> dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Why? See, so, yeah, I didn't write that He's trying to break Roy Castle's record. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. Come on, come on, what is it? What is it? Think. It's an elephant and it was really old. It was about 76. Right. And it had sore feet because it's old and they don't make stairs. And the that roads, big, are, do they? roads are bad and that. Yeah, go so, on. So, um, they said, what are we going to do? And the <laughs> town was like, oh, you know, we're used to seeing it around. It's part of the thing, you know, we don't want it to have sore feet. Yeah. So, they got some slippers made for it. <laughs> And it had like a picture of the elephant looking happy wearing some slippers. <laughs> I love him! I love Carl, his world! Think of it, where did you see this picture? That was on the internet. <laughs> right. That's a lesson though for any elephants listening. You know, don't wear stilettos to work every no. day. No. Because it can do your feet in. So that it's but don't, a, have don't elephants have really bad memories? No, they, they have, have really good memories. memories. Oh, do they? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good then. <laughs> no, I just, I, I just thought they'd forget where they put them. I thought there was something about, <laughs> about elephants having bad. <laughs> Bad memories on that. It goes on. Where's my slippers? Yeah, I'm sure I left them by the test. So, account. so sorry. There's a there's a for walk around wearing slippers. Yeah, yeah. There's th that's in uh, what in India. slippers? Those sort of old man ones with the sort of check. Well, round design. ones, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. round ones. There was that going on. And is it happening? Is it happier? I mean, does it feel yeah, more satisfying? Yeah, it looked it. Did it look- <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell? How can you tell uh, uh, what else is the- uh, mm. there was a woman who's had a- had a breast insure for 150 grand. Right. Okay. Any okay, more information there? What? Third party fire and theft? I don't know, it just had, it had a picture of her with them, like, you know, out. <laughs> 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 and I just thought, yeah, you should get them covered. Oh. <laughs> He's done another real joke! Brilliant, that's a proper joke. He's done, yeah. look at his little face, he smiles! I'd like to see you on one of the sort of TV panel games. If they could bring back sort of celebrity squares, it'd yeah. be amazing as the centre square. Oh, that would be Wouldn't incredible. Be or um, on the countdown in Dictionary Corner. Diction, I imagine him in Dictionary well, Corner. Well, come up with cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not at all. Yeah. Memblant. Mem <laughs> yeah, what does what? that mean, Carl? It's just anything you wanted to mean. <laughs> and what I've got. 
there, there's a dog that's got a cough in <laughs> Singapore because <laughs> it smokes 20 a day. <laughs> Right, okay, another one. So another no, one. no, no, it was the last one in it, so yeah. I'll save it. The last one we've got is why I don't think Sorry, what was that? Wash up with you, that was it. <laughs> but they, they put, they, was that it? That they was what? Survey of washing pots and pans. I didn't understand, up. you said, who, you said Italy were the cleanest. No, Spain. No, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. We were the quickest, but Italy was the, the Spain cleanest. Spain was the cleanest. Turkey were the slowest. Yeah. yeah. Spain were the cleanest. But why weren't we cleaner? Because we were washing up, why were we not paying attention to the We did it rubbish, we did it quick. We did it quickly, but, but, I don't know what it was being rated on. Who was doing it? Was it Lynette Newman or Ainsley Howard? She's quick. Both of them are quick. Yeah. Well, they've got like kind of loose slaves that do it for them. Did we? Did we use? Did we use fairy liquid? No, it didn't. It didn't did have we a use a whole bunch of boy skates? Didn't say that. <laughs> just like said, Lynette. <laughs> <laughs> it just said, uh, you know, that, that, that. Did we, who, who, had had the who had the softest hands? <laughs> So I didn't, it didn't say I didn't. Why is it we don't get notified that this is taking place? I don't know. When I was a kid, no one ever said, you know, we need recruits because we're we're doing a survey on who can wash yeah. up the quickest. Are you disappointed in yourself with that one, Carl? It, it is pretty dull. <laughs> to be fair, and that is why we've got to bring in either con merchant okay. or a uh, wine merchant or shut or, up with your face. Yeah. Would you be able to, if I asked you, if I put you on the spot in the next, sort of, after the next record, would you be able to give an example of how Con Merchant would work? I mean, is there something you could do, just sort of, s experiment Should we play a record? Should we play a record? <laughs> no, no, I've I've a I can do better than that. Yeah. What? Ads. Go on. Oh. <laughs> Travis on XFM 104.9 on Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pukerton. We're doing Educating Ricky. Right, final one. Come on, Carl. Right, what was it? <laughs> it was, uh... <laughs> Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write on? Yeah. Yeah. Cause Snappy. I couldn't, well, I couldn't think of a heading for it. It's basically, uh, Go on. people who have tattoos, I've never understood it, right? Um, that they have something put on their arm. Right, sorry. Have we started the educate? Is this part of it? Are you educating me? This is something that, uh, uh, will be useful in my life that I didn't know about. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> no, it's just like they've got, they've got a machine now, right, right that, um, does tattoos. Um, you, you, uh, you come up with a design you want and you sort of, it, this machine scans it and, uh, you put your arm in this thing and you press print or whatever and then it, it does the tattoo on your hand or on your what, arm. What, like loads of little needles that follow a pattern? Yeah. The computer, basically, is it? yeah. Is it a real tattoo? It's a broad, proper It's a proper tattoo. one. The fella said, um... Well, as long as it goes out, it pierces the skin with a, with a... I just, just wondered if it's one of those kind of, you know, those kind of... No, it, it must be lots of, lots of little needles or a moving needle that can go Sorry, along. Sorry, but how is this cleaned, like, in between each person? Dunno, probably, I dunno. Well, no, it's not, it's only that if it's one needle, it's just the head, isn't it? If it's one needle that moves, right. does it like a like loads of little... Um, little what little. are we gaining from a, a machine doing it? Just because you know they're not gonna sort of mess it up. But hold on, how do you keep your arm still? Because your skin moves like it's, it's the machine it's sort of strapped to your arm. Right, so fella, it spreads... I mean, so the fella said that the tricky thing was in all this, it was the fact that, um, you know, nobody would let him test it out on anyone else, so he had to do it himself. But did it work? Because the thing is with the tattoo yeah, artist, they yeah. can see when your skin's moved and they can see what they've done and they keep wiping it and looking, whereas a machine's just got to trust itself. Yeah. So, I think one needle would, could go wrong. If it was a lot of needles, it just, that it just came down, like, you know, a thousand needles that was an imprint. Yeah. But, no, but yeah. obviously I'm asking someone who's, uh, hasn't delved any further than there's a machine that can give you a tattoo. That's all you've got at the moment, isn't it? Well, I'm, uh, yeah, basically. That's all you've got? I mean, that's, that's what I've got because I'm not a fan of tattoos, I don't. But where did you read this again? This was, uh, Internet? This was on the internet, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And I, I just don't understand why people do it. That's, that's what got me attention. Cause me, um. Sorry, what have, what have I learned from this? Um, that if you, if you wanted to get one. You know, you can get one done by a machine now. <laughs> you know, people say machines are sort of taking over and that. And, and there's another one. But it's just the fact, I mean, I don't know. I, I so don't, give us the snappy title of this, this education why again. Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write it on? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always think when I see people with, with loads of tattoos. Like, there's that fella who we were talking about the other week in Scotland mm. who, who was covered 99% in tattoos. Yes. It's just like, what have you done that for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't get rid of it now. You've, you've, you've done it now. Yeah. Um, my, one of my uncles, right, Tattoo Stan, he, he, um, he's just caked in them. Tattoo Stan. Right. I don't think he's my proper uncle, <laughs> but it's just like, me, me dad's <laughs> Tattoo Stan! No, me dad's That's, that's a province in Russia, isn't it? 
My dad's got loads of mates who, When like, you say he's not your proper uncle. I do you know how, like, when Just the comes around, around school? Right, Uncle Stan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there was, like, there was, um, my dad had loads of mates like that. There was John the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> right, so he either works in a prison or he likes to have sex. Cabby. <laughs> Cab driver. <laughs> okay. There was Jimmy the Hat. I don't know where he Jimmy is. Jimmy the Hat? Yeah. And, Did uh, he wear a hat? No. No. There was, um, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. You sure he wasn't a relative? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fred the Veg used to get us, like, big bags of potatoes and that. Fred Veg, yeah, okay. And there was, there was Tattoo Stan. Right. And he was just caked in them, and I used to always look at him thinking, why have you done that? I must have only been, like, you know, I suppose seven. If, if you're born with a name like Tattoo Stan, <laughs> exactly. you're destined, Sorry, aren't I'm you, really? like a 1950s gang? I'm worried yeah, about, like, I'm worried about- doing a bank job. What was his name? The Hat? What was his Jimmy, name? Jimmy the Hat. I'm worried about Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Not having a hat. <laughs> I don't understand it. Are you sure he didn't have a hat? Not when I met him. Did he ever wear a hat? <laughs> I didn't see him that much. Do you think it was a joke, like, you know, when, um, y your mate sort of like, you know, uh, eight foot and huge, you call him <laughs> Little <laughs> John or Tiny? Mm. Do you think- Well, the, the fact thing... that he never wore Yeah, they went, hold on, I've, I've noticed some hat about Jim. Go on. No hat. And they go, oh, true, let's call him Jim the Hat. <laughs> Jim the Hat, yeah. But me, um, me Uncle Stan, he had, like, loads of them. He did, did them himself. Oh, dear. And it was always <laughs> oh, thing. God. What was it, what was it, things like? It was, he had, like, the- A cross. Cut here. Cut one here, on made in neck. Britain. And if you're going to do them yourself, I'd say at least make sure you're, go you're sort of a good drawer. Yeah. And don't and do it in the mirror so it comes out backwards. Well, that, that was the other thing. But, like, I remember he did, um, I mean, names are all right. He had, like, all his kids' names down his arm. <laughs> and, uh, what are they called? Yeah. Oh, God, it is. <laughs> that is Stan Jr. Yeah. And, um... Paul shits the bed. <laughs> um, I'm trying to... <laughs> oh, Wabai Kate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Frankie never amazed to anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So he had like uh, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. I don't think he's mine. <laughs> so he did all this stuff. I don't even know why I'm telling you about that. No, nor do I, Carl. Hey, so, I just, to be honest, I don't know that if I don't know. If, maybe you just have to picture this. But my picture, my sister <laughs> took, had to take a photo once. She was working in like a factory, not to denigrate people who work in factories, but there happened to be a particularly oddball kind of lank-haired weird guy living uh, working in this factory, and he made his own. He did his own tattoos. And she took a photo of it because she was so extraordinary. He'd drawn it himself. Now bear in mind, it was the kind of thing you saw when you were doing art when you were like <laughs> 15. <laughs> this is the sort of person who designed their own like rock, heavy rock album cover. <laughs> yeah. He's that sort of person. <laughs> so, pr I mean, like, was it, was it a dragon draw? with breasts? You're not far off, Rick. No. You're not far off. I'll tell you what it was. He had this tattooed on his back. It took up his entire back. She took a photo of it for me. He drew it himself. He had it tattooed himself. And it was just too much detail. Too yeah. much detail for a tattoo. It needs to be very simple, I think, to make a tattoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, n a naked female vampire having a shower. <laughs> why was she having a shower? Having a shower, that's why she was naked. Yeah. And so she had- She was- been out, she, she was, uh, presumably- uh, been out, been out, been been out a lot of blood. Yeah, well, she, 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 uh, she was naked, so she, you could see her, 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 her naked body. Yeah. Uh, she's quite a beautiful vampire, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, although the symmetry of her face was somewhat off. Yeah. The only thing I think that gave well, her away- bad spine. Was that she had, um, she did have some pointed teeth. I right. Mean, I think that was how you knew she was a vampire. Right. Was she looking- but, um, was she looking... she was having a shower was yeah, very that is specific. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it well, but he sort of drawn in all the- he said to the eye, said, listen, I, I want a, a naked bird, right? But I don't want to be- he goes, well, you we could put her in a shower, because then they went, pop well, her in the shower. That at least gives some kind yeah, of justification. That's the plot. That's the plot. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's justified <laughs> within the story if she's in a shower. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that. So, Carl. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any other nicknames your friends of your family had? What was your nickname, Carl? Just, uh, Pilkey. Because <laughs> for a minute I thought Carl the Veg would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, Carl the Veg. And what, what, why has your dad got a little tattoo, dopey twat, on his arm? <laughs> right, we'll do the answers to, uh, Robbusters next, yeah? Brilliant. <laughs> First card. S still sounds brilliant, that. It is a cracker. They're from Manchester as well, Carl. So they got a little bit of pride there, eh? I think one of them's, uh, one of my mate's dad's. Really? Yeah, I think so. What's his nickname? 
Well, his name was, uh, I don't really want to say his name. Oh, okay. Laurie, his first name was. Yeah. Still, uh, still is, probably. Yeah. Uh, he was a and good what, You know those little fellas at school that didn't know each other, weren't related and weren't friends, could it be too obvious, that they had webbed, um, hands and big heads? Yeah. What, what were they, did they have any nicknames? If, again, too obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. Well, oh, he's big head, or, you know, sure. Oh, I bet you got that juggling or oh, frog right. twins. Yeah. Can I just interrupt you guys? Because we've just had an email here. Um, I hate to query you, Carl, and you're educating Ricky sections. I know you put a lot. Don't read this. Let me just read it for you. Um, just had an email here from Olivia, and this has also been corroborated by someone else. I, I forget who, who it was. She was just she just tuned in and she just heard you explaining the expression "letting the cat out of the bag." So sure. uh, it's all to do with cats that were put in bags yeah. by by dodgy butchers, <laughs> possibly in the 17th century. We're not too sure. <laughs> um, anyway, she claims. Well, uh, let me see. She says uh, she uses both the words "twaddle" and "crap" uh, in relation. In, in relation to your definition. <laughs> oh. uh, she says, letting the cat out of the bag is an old shipping expression from when sailors used to get flogged for their misdemeanours. The cat letting the is cat, the cat of nine tails, of which uh, is. is a kind of whip thing that you, they used yeah. to keep hanging in a bag below deck. If yeah. it was discovered that a sailor had done something wrong, the cat would be let out of the bag yeah. and you'd get a whipping. Of course, don't let the cat out of the bag. We need to cover something she, up with a She's secret. talking nonsense, right? No, she's not. That's she the is. truth. That's because the, the truth. one I read about that was there's not enough room in here to swing a cat, right? And that was people who worked on a boat. Yeah, well, that's the same way. Well, that's fine. They can have the questions for the They're not going to keep going on about people working on a boat to get loads of sailors. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have two phrases about the same thing. Can't They're these not going to be going to do with their time. Think, think, think how many think how many metaphors have birds in them, and you know uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Why can't you have? You can have as many sounds as you like about anything, Carl. Yeah, There's well, not a rule. Whatever. They don't go. We've made one up about yeah. the cat and nine tails. Well, cheers for that, Oliver. Um, <laughs> Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. Don't, don't see your uh, email coming up with the Rockbusters answers, so well, <laughs> let's, uh, give, us the answer let's give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was, um, you've been dunking that for too long. Yeah. That was LB. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, got that one. Uh, the third one, we'll jump to that one because you've got it. Uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's all over. That was GK. That's a great one. That's Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight. Glad it's night. Glad it's night. That's Glad that it's is night. brilliant, Carl. And the one that uh, you're both having a problem with, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. FD. Go on. Fats Domino. Yeah? What? The dominoes. You play dominoes in a pub. The, the dominoes fat. Pub tables are quite small. You won't be able to play that game in this pub. Fats Domino. Rubbish. <laughs> so, do you want to pick a winner? Random rubbish. Winner? Well, Random winner. you say it's rubbish, but plenty of people got the right answer. Rubbish. Who um, do you want to go with? The bunch of, um, slightly rubbish prizes <laughs> is going to Elliot K from Chigwell in Essex. Uh, well done to Elliot. I, I just, w I, can, before we go, can we just get an, an email off Anders? Because I think he must, well, I think we've probably turned him round with this show. <laughs> I have thought so. I think he's going to be say saying, coming to us with his tail between his legs, saying, <laughs> sorry lads, <laughs> blinding show. I was wrong, you were right. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Uh, song for the Lovers is very exciting this yeah, week. Yeah, uh, we haven't had a song for the, uh, the Lovers or the Ladies for quite some time. Let's yeah, combine so the two. Sorry, and sorry, and sorry. John Martin, May You Never, let's end with Beautiful that. Beautiful We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Mm. He's got everything. He's like one of our best rock stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Hello there. You're Steve Merchant. I am indeed. Uh, Carl Pilkington over there. Big day today. Really? Yeah, for Carl. He hasn't been looking forward to it. He's been whinging in the week. A couple of things. He thinks he's overworked. He thinks he, he thinks he's uh, overworked here and he's stressed and he's got to do DIY. MTV are coming in, in right, to give him the chance of his li a, a lifetime to do a, just a, a little uh, screen test. And he's going, well, I'm not going to look good, am I? They're not going to look why. He said, well, I've got a round head and I'll be wearing headphones. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's not made an effort. He thinks, oh, they'll put them off. He said, I won't even press record. He's got a spot on his head. Uh huh. Uh huh. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, also- you're not looking forward to it. You're not excited about it. It's a great opportunity. Why is that a great opportunity? Why to get you? on MTV. No, but- It's like money for all group, group Yeah, but look what's happened to people like, um, Jeremy Speak, or whatever his name is. Not Jeremy Speak, yeah. Yeah, and, um, Yeah, and slightly different. Slightly different. Why is it? Well- so y he? You're- you're making it in the industry and you've got- you've got something to give. He- he happened to be around when they were filming an airport. <laughs> no, Do you uh, see the difference? Alright, the other one then, who's on a boat. <laughs> Same thing, thing although at least she had a skill. Well. She had a skill, you know, she, she can sing, you know. Well, it's, it's just, I, I, I think it can all go wrong, do you know what I mean? Well, of course it can. 
So can sit in your little room moaning about nothing happening in the world. You know, he, he wanted to stop educating Ricky because nothing happened. He said, he said, look what happened last week. I scoured the net. He said, all I found was a dog in a car wash and a parrot and a vicar. Uh -huh. right? I tell you what, there ain't much more going on this week. We are talking. Sh well, listen, me and Steve yesterday we took a day off to prove you wrong, and we've come up with two of the most incredible things I told you about, and they're amazing. <laughs> so there are things out there, or is it just, just, but just go for truth. Go for truth and science yeah, yeah, and discovery. Do, do. Don't, don't, yeah. The, the yeah. fact is, is strange than fiction. You don't have to revert, revert to oh, sort of yeah. like God and ghosts. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, you know, like, the last couple of weeks I've been saying there's not much going on. Yeah. I found out when I was looking that there was a day in 1930, right, it was oh. a good Friday, there was no news. There was nothing going on. They had to put a music video on or something on the telly because there was nothing going on. <laughs> play a record. We're going to play some classic tracks today. This is uh, Debaser. Pixies, Debaser. I was looking forward to playing that. Came and said, "Carl, I'll play that." I was looking. Uh, he put it on. Uh, Lauren just called through and said, "Do we play that in the last half hour?" Embarrassing. Oh uh, yeah. So it's what really is the point of having a producer if he doesn't look, check things out? So, I mean, it's a good track. I mean, I'm sorry if you heard that twice right. in the last hour. Go on, so go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go Listen to everything all the time. I've been running around. I get in early on a Saturday. You got in about the same time as me. I, I went out and bought you some biscuits, so you're happy. <laughs> I put the coffee on. Yeah. I saw it, what prizes we're gonna give away. I've been running to the library getting you certain tracks. Yeah. I can't listen all the time. I'm doing my best. Well, oh, I'm not sure it's good enough. <laughs> I mean, I'm worried when MTV come in, if they've heard this kind of shoddy production, they're gonna start to well, wonder what you're playing the same songs every five yeah, minutes no, anyway. Sorry, are you sort of overworked because you were on Zoe Ball show talking? Oh, hello, what's going on here? Well, I, I was in the, he, he was no, just to be on our show. No, I was in I the car. Seem, I seem to remember, Rick, he was, he was a nobody yeah. that got a chance to come on air and talk about that. And guess what he was getting th auditions guess for what, MTV? Guess what he was talking about on Zoe's show? Oh, hello. All the jellyfish stuff and all that. About Can't getting believe it. Recycling yeah. material that you've yeah. done on this show. I phoned in, I phoned in, right, and I went, stop doing materials. I was what? He just hung up on me. That well, I had a job to do. Who do you think you are? Your Look, ego has just gone through the room. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. What? I had a job to do in the week. They asked me to drive the desk for Zoe, right? They didn't Zoe, say talk. Zoe, yes. if she talks to you, you don't- you can't just ignore her. Yes, you can. But you Who can't. is she? <laughs> right, Who does she think she is? <laughs> you made a promise to us, a pact, that you were our kind of- yeah. Monkey. Yeah. What, what I'm I do <laughs> if someone takes time off, I've got to do it. It's my job. Yeah, but you don't it's have to talk. Job. You don't have to use. You're um, the head of production. We've given you this special gig. This is like taking you out weekends. Yeah, and exactly. We, you know, if we find out you're getting too much excitement in the week, we'll have to just calm it down. Yeah. Get another little. Well, that's it now. Anyway, it was only last week. <laughs> I, do, I do you know? I feel like kind of solid. I feel betrayed. It's like you were having an affair behind our back, yeah. and you rumbled. He was doing all the stuff. He was doing was like, oh yeah, jellyfish and this jellyfish. Yeah, because that. she was asking, and I thought it was a good way of promoting this show. Actually, oh, oh did you mention the show? Yeah, I did at some point. <laughs> did you? What did you say? I just said uh, more about that on Saturday afternoons. So you talk twice. I only heard you talk once. So you're talking all the time. Well, about five times in the week, <laughs> in the full week, five times. Theory, right? Me. And one, it was just stuff. You could never be a monk, could you? Chatting away all the yeah. time. Right, what have we got? I play ball as well, to be honest. <laughs> I feel ball's slightly responsible for it. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. She well, can't find her own, you know, given to get on the show. <laughs> yeah. She can't find her own kind of, you know, loser, then <laughs> don't start stealing hours. Outrageous. <laughs> yeah. Well, coming up. Right, yeah. Got Maybe we'll get Fat Boy Slim in. Indeed. Next. Yeah. Saturday, if you're listening, um, Slim, yeah. come in on the show. What's his name? Ernie or something? <laughs> What's his name? Norman. Norman. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Ernie! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, know. that's great, Ernie Ball. Yeah, uh, he, Ernie, he wouldn't change Ernie his name. Ernie <laughs> Cook, that's it. Yeah, right. that's great. Yeah. Anyway, Go coming on. up today, uh, we have got educating Ricky. Right. Yeah. Okay, is this the Couple. last one? You've promised it might be. Um, I believe there's a book out. That might help me with this feature, okay. so we'll see how it goes. We might. I was thinking of new features in the week. I've got. Um, <laughs> I wanted to come up with a what to do celebrity fact club. <laughs> celebrity fact club. All right. That's, uh, I've just got to get some celebrities in first okay. before we can kick that off. So maybe in the new year. Oh, Ball and maybe cook. Zoe Ball. Yeah. Ball yeah. and cook. Yeah. Start yeah. off. Maybe. Right. And I've also got um, cook and ball stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Good one. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Maybe you could sell that to Zoe show. <laughs> And, um, I'm also thinking <laughs> through the Ricky hole. Through the Ricky hole, okay. What's yeah, that? That's, uh, 
I'm quite. No, you just got the title again, haven't you? Yeah. 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 Okay, play record. So, uh, Rockbuster's yeah. coming up as well. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Wu Chang Clan, Gravel Pit on XFM 104.9. We're playing some great music today. Yeah, I wonder uh, if we should maybe, uh, you know, it's getting towards Christmas to yeah. think about this. Should we dedicate the show to all the people in the world who maybe are less privileged and less, uh, fortunate than us? No. No? Um, okay. Have you got to do the prizes for the, uh. Prizes? <laughs> okay. Alright, so, screw those <laughs> who are less fortunate, is what TV's Ricky Gervais <laughs> thinks. Um, Rick, I know you're a big fan. Uh, of the likes of Brian Adams, <laughs> Robert Palmer, <laughs> uh, Alien, Ant Farm, and uh, obviously uh, um, ZZ Top. Yeah. And so you'll be enjoying the best air guitar album in the world. Right. Yeah. Volume two. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Well, volume one <laughs> wasn't enough. There wasn't no. enough. <laughs> exactly. Um, again, <laughs> we've seemed to be able to give one of these away every <laughs> week. Are you just not sending these out? I mean, these are the same prizes we started this game with, I think, a couple of weeks back. Are you just not sending the prizes out? Yeah, but I want to give like more people a chance because if if one week they listen in and think God I wouldn't mind winning that sure if you if you've got more copies of it they'll go well I'll listen next week okay. yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah so again this is uh, one of those um, the best songs you've heard on an advert ever Ma albums. mainly mobile phones mainly mobile phone adverts yeah, yeah although there is the uh, Smash Mouth <laughs> one which is used in the Ford Fiesta TV yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah walking on the sun as well. I forget what it is um, uh, the Smashing Pumpkins album that we've given away in the past again yeah. I've got a bulk order of those that can't shift them um, Wild Weather I don't know who's interested in this this what, is, is uh, a double box set VHS of different weather. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah there's that uh, is two amazing. cassette tapes there. It's presented How long by is that uh, Donald McIntyre. It's a thrilling trip with the most e exciting forces of our wild and turbulent world. So, so I'm right in saying it's, it's, it's a double VHS stuff like video set of, of different weather. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, no, it's got, I mean, it includes the fastest winds, oh, the hottest desert, joking. um, and the biggest rain machine on the planet. That's oh, on there. I think you have to. Oh, God. I wonder if they're, I hope they're bringing out another box set soil. Yeah, absolutely. Just goes through different mud. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and this you may be of interest. I've read good reviews of the uh, the DVD of this. It's uh, a two disc set. Uh, the Wicker Man, oh the classic right, 70s film, film, but yeah. uh, it's got a bunch of extras. That in is there. actually so that, quite that's a good actually film worth having. I would probably throw the rest away. But the, the Wicker Man, get the on DVD, Christmas. and it's yeah, it's a quite very interesting. Yeah, but you'll enjoy that. So, so uh, what? Uh, what this is Rockbusters, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's for Rockbusters. Brilliant. Well, let's let I say get the ball rolling now. What of Rockbusters? Yeah, get the ball rolling. I don't know. I mean, tease them, Rick. Don't you know? Don't you know? Don't sort of <laughs> spunk all the good stuff early on. I mean, well, that's dynamite. You can you can say spunk. I can't. <laughs> Go on, well, well, we've got um. Actually, it's quite good moving it about because we might have some new listeners there. Yeah, and I would have also. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not after last week. No. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. So if you haven't heard it before, I'll give you some initials. It work. You know, it's like initials of an artist or of a it's band. It's blockbusters. And and a cryptic clue to who the band is. There's two easy ones. One difficult one. <laughs> uh, first one is um, that'll never get off the ground. Right. Yeah. That'll never get off the ground. The That'll initial. never get off the ground is the clue. Not LZ. The initials are LZ. You are joking. <laughs> Two easy ones. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then you've got um, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. <laughs> Right. Say it again. That woman has got a pair of her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's H H. Right. It's a bit of a difficult one. And then the uh, the last one. You'll get a uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them, right? You'll get what? A right load of bacon off them. Uh huh. Um, that's L. L. Yeah. So uh, once you get a right quickly, load of bacon off of them, you'll get you'll get a right load of bacon off them. Uh -huh. So first one that'll never get off the ground. L Z. Uh, that woman has got her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's <laughs> H H. Brilliant. And uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them. That's L. And so it's an email only competition. Email only, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we pick a winner before the end. So. And the winner win that win that Wicker Man. The weather. The best of the weather. Weather. <laughs> the best of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> the best of the weather. As a compilation, Channel yeah, 4. Exactly. The uh, winds like to vary. Uh, I, I, I love 1976 Remember this weather. one from August 1979? Oh, warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, the best of the weather. I'll tell you what. You remember how we always play, like, great music, mm. usually? Mm, mm, mm. I'm up you're, not you're not got another one, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is David Bowie, Driving Saturday. Oh, really? uh, David Bowie, Driving Saturday. Mm. That's a great track, isn't it? Mm. A crash course for the ravers, eh? That's what this show is, isn't it, Carl? Crash course for the ravers. They tune and they go, what? That's, 
That's so cool. I wish I was like Carl Pilkington. You reckon? Yeah, definitely. You forgot to uh, read your mum's clues out, didn't you? Yeah, she's, These are just uh, for fun only. This is Carl's mum. She, uh, she listened one week and now she sends him a little example of, uh, Rockbusters every week. She's got, um, what did she send? Um, this group would go well with your Christmas dinner. Cranberries? Yeah. Um, they make a few good cupboards. They what? make a few good cupboards? Yeah. The carpenters. The carpenters. The carpenters. I was thinking of EMF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I was thinking B and Q. The yeah. B and Q's. Uh, this group thinks of lots of things. <laughs> this group thinks of lots of things. Yeah. Uh, go on. Imagination. <laughs> uh, I think they're the best ones. Yeah, they're, well, they're, 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 they're the best ones. Well, obviously we want the worst ones then. Uh, here's one more. Uh, she'd really like Blackpool. She'd really like Blackpool. She'd really Go like Blackpool. Fairground attraction. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Right, so, uh, there's, uh, uh... Does she write anything else in the letter, or does she just send them, like, <laughs> on a scrawled on the back of, you know, I don't know, a till receipt? She did with the first one, now it's just, just the Rockbusters. Right. So, <laughs> really? She doesn't bother asking how you are, or... Well, I'll speak to her in a week. Right. On the phone, so yeah. Yeah. What kind of conversations would you have, then, with your What are you saying? Stuff? Do you moan about how overworked you are and stuff to her? Uh, uh, that just, I mean, they're always surprised when I'm getting in late, and that it's like, you know, what have you done today? Oh, I've just got in from work, and it's like half past eight at night. A lot of people get them at half eight, Carl. Next. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, just saying how's the flat going, I yeah. was asking my dad some DIY tips the other day. Mm. Um, you know, usual sort of stuff mm. we talk to your mum and dad mm. really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. talking about the bisons with them. I was we watching, uh, did you watch the mammals in the week? Oh, I'm David sick. Attenborough? No. I was thinking actually, right, all this MTV stuff, if there's one reason why I'd like to do it, yeah. is I was watching Attenborough, the, the mammals program, I reckon I could do something like that. Right. Right. And just have, have like me, instead of Attenborough, like a young, you know, a young sort of fresh person. Yeah. Uh, watching like, um, certain animals and saying, do we need these? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God! I was going to death on Earth. That's, that's amazing! Do yeah. we need these? And, no, no, and, and, the, and the audience at home would vote, <laughs> would there be some kind of telephone yeah, vote? out system. Oh, yeah. The that. thing is, is yeah. like, I, it's something interesting that Amber was saying the other night. <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> Do we need these? On Jonathan Ross's show, on his telly show, right, he was saying, uh, he said, you could take all the humans off the Earth and it would carry on. But take, like, some animals off it and mammals and that. You've got problems on your hands. Mm. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. So it's like the question is, do we need these? Is that part of the big thing? Right. Like jellyfish. Yeah. We've talked about jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah. So which mammals in particular were you, you talked about? Like Bull Show, haven't you? Hey. Eh? <laughs> which mammals uh, were you thinking we don't need when you watched the show the other night? Um. Any in particular that you thought they don't need them? They're not of interest. Well, I like I like whales, but I don't know what they do. I know. <laughs> Uh, okay. And they're, they're taking up quite a lot of room. Sure. Um, but <laughs> stuff like, quite a lot of room. Yeah. But like, um, jellyfish, <laughs> I looked into because, yeah, you know, well, I was talking about them. Mm -hmm. And, um, they were saying they've got no eyes, no art, <laughs> uh, they're something like 97% water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're blind and they do about 33 miles a day. Right. So it's like, do we need them? Could Pointless. we clear them out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, a big net. That would that would be the, like the program. What? What? Right. We'll get rid of them. Uh, next week we'll be looking at. Uh, <laughs> Rhinos. <laughs> it's genius. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's genius. And like going along, sort of like picking up sea enemies and going and just lobbing them into the sea. Well, what do you think about MTV doing that? And then I, I just in between the bits, play music. Really? I play music the related relate to, to fish. So I could play like fish. Yeah. That rock guy. Or uh, the rock, animals. Rock lobster. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. what else could this we get? This could in run there? and run. What, what other songs have got animals in them? The well, monkeys? Could play the monkeys? Yeah, there's about a million, so let's not start this. No, yeah. but do you know yeah. what I mean? So, 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 but, so do we need this? So MTV Carpet. flies you around the world <laughs> and to the most incredible exotic locations. You sort of climb up a tree or whatever next to, I don't know what lives up a tree, some kind of rare parrot. <laughs> you say, sloth. look at that, it's colourful, sloth. it's interesting. Oh, you like sloths, so don't you? No, they just live up trees, but I'd say, do we need them? Mm. Why? Well, what do they do? 
What do you mean? What do they do? What do you want from an animal? Carpentry. What well, do you like, want? I don't, I don't like scorpions, right? Right. But then I found out they look after those, uh, those monkey things. They're not I've, monkeys, they're whatever. lizards! Well, right, yeah, then lizards, they look after the lizards. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a reason. But, but do you need the lizard? Could be well, your next yeah, question. because the local people made shoes out of them. But not when the scorpion protected them, they didn't. Right, we don't need them then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So, and so ultimately, you, would anyone decide, I mean, do the animals kind of get a chance to mount a case for their survival? I mean, is there maybe someone that comes into their yeah, corner yeah, and sort of defends I'd have, them? I'd have like a David Attenborough type character who says, right. well, they do this, and I'll go, yeah, but do we need that doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And so what, what does an animal need to do in order for you to feel that it sort of gets the chance of life? I mean, like a pet, like an animal, like a dog maybe, or a cat, I mean, they give a certain affection to its owner. Is that a valid, uh, reason to survive? Not particularly. Uh, not really. No, okay. I've been saying that though, blind people use dogs, so they are useful. So dogs are useful. Farmers Farmers use, use they dogs. They save people, don't they, in yeah. snowy weather? Cats. <sighs> I'd have to think about it. Okay. Keep the mice down. Yeah, but yeah. you got rent to kill. Okay. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is something that will affect the world. Right. I think you'll find everything does. I think you'll find everything does. Mm. Except Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what effect he's having on the world. I tell you what though, Steve, right? Did you watch the mammals? I didn't see the mammals. They had, uh, they had bison on it. Right. The weirdest looking things you've ever seen. Yeah. They've really Again, got- Again, you're on dangerous <laughs> ground no, no, here, no, Carl. No, they've really got a- <laughs> it's like, decide what you want to look like. <laughs> okay. It's just a mismatch of stuff. It's got a really big airy head. Yeah. Um- And like you. Sort of- Bald at the back. Right. <laughs> uh, sort of it's like thinner. someone you went to school with. <laughs> <laughs> Was there two of them? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. I love, love the backing as well. Mm. It's just so good. The, the, the lyrics, the things that go, I don't, oh, they're my favourite band of the year. Um, next week then, we'll do all our favourite songs of the year, shall we? No, I think it's got to be two weeks, Tom. Oh, two weeks, is it? Yeah, we'll I'm away Christmas. next week as well. What do you mean you're away next week? What are you doing? Is that a ball show? I'm going, going up north again. Why? So Claire's gonna be here with you. Okay. Yeah, at least she, what are you doing up north? She does her job. Just, uh, Suzanne's dad's birthday, um, so. I bet he's a party animal. I bet I've heard that they really kick off, don't they? <laughs> Is it, yeah, yeah mentally? Are so, you gonna be raving? Can't concentrate now. <laughs> Oh, well, he's all stressed because the lady from MTV is here. She's going to film his little face. So the, thing, the things he said in the week, he was so worried. He's got to worry about the spot on his head. That won't come out. Just that you've got your best side. It's on that side. That's all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. There's the camera's out. Look, he's getting nervous now. Okay, Carl. Ignore the camera. Okay. Just ignore the camera. Okay. Now, me and Steve have done our research for you, and we've got two amazing things to tell you. Uh, what should I tell him first? About the baby or the. Well, they're both equally fascinating, so you, you choose. Um, I'll tell you the crab thing first, right? Um, we, uh, Steve actually saw this thing in the garden in the week, uh, about our research thing, and then we looked it up, we looked into it on Friday, and it is incredible. Right, listen to this. There's a, a thing in, um, um, in a bay in, um, uh, New England, right, where it's, it's like the biggest, um, uh, they make silicon chips and stuff for computers, right? And because of the data protection thing, after they've d done them, because uh, they have to destroy the plates, Right, well the information's sort of put onto them. But there's still flakes of silicon, they sort of grind it down straight away. And some of the flakes got into the bay, okay. But some of the information's still on the, even the slight granules of silicon. Anyway, gets in the water, and silicon is rather like, um, a, a carbon derivative. I reckon if there'd been life on another planet that wasn't carbon based, it'd be silicon based. Because mm -hmm. that's simple sugars and products, it's just COH and that, and it can work with silicon, right? Anyway, the crabs have been taken up, it's put on the water, and they, they looked out on the beach, and, uh, over years, the crabs have started, um, sort of putting themselves in formations, like geometric format, and they couldn't work out why they were doing this. And, uh, when they, put them in the experiment, they sort of like chopped them up and they found they'd taken on silicon. And it had sort of got into their brain and they were downloading information. They actually, they picked up little things because it's just chemical, um, you know, like uh, electrical impulses had got information off the silicon chip and they were interfacing it. But, this is the amazing thing, one bloke sort of thought of this and he thought, well, if, if it's a simple computer, the brain, if it's just a simple sort of electrical thing, then maybe there's, there's sort of, in, uh, you know, we could, we could get it down. So what, what they did is they made a thing called a biointerface. And they d put it into the crab's brain, just a really simple brain, so it's measured on the right? And it got impulses from it, and they were getting 
like computer readers. So it's just flashes of like symbols and geometric things right, on this screen to read the crowd's brain, and it was stuff like you know fragments of a. Um, what, what made them do this in the first place? Because they saw that they saw the crowds behaving differently. They were behaving differently to each other. They were just like they were, you know, intelligent, and they were sort of solving problems and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, when they downloaded the the thing, it was like a there was um uh they found us they were so fast they found a, one of the secretary's names where it had been on the silicon chip, where it was just a, like a flash of a computer screen. <coughs> but the most amazing thing is, they downloaded a memory, right, it was like a, like a snapshot where it had been burnt onto the retina of the crab, just a snapshot or something, and it was like a picture of the beach, like a couple of years ago, right? And they also did, uh, d uh, incredible, it was like a, just a, a digital black and white sort of thing, so they could see what the crab had seen. Amazing. Jeez. Amazing. So Intelligent what, 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 what are they doing with well, them now? Well, they think, this is the, this is the upshot, they think they could use it as spy crabs, because they could put these, get these crabs. Also, also, the other thing is, as generations went on, right, so they'd put a crab in the, the sea or something, right, uh, lots of crabs in, and then as generations went on, a, a newborn crab, they downloaded the memory, and it had the memories of it's great, 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 all together. It had every memory that any crab had been related to it beforehand. Because it passed it on, it just passed it on. So not even ones that had been eating the, the silicon stuff? Yeah. No, that these, they- These are just like ones that have had kids. Yeah. yeah. And they've got like- And they know every, so you'd know everything your great, great, everything right the way back. So would that work if, if we ate silicon? Well, I suppose so. So what are they gonna- well, they can use them for all sorts of things, though. I mean, that's that's what's incredible. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you train it particularly. I don't know, it'd be quite tricky to train, but I'm assuming if they can, if they can, if they can do it that way, then presumably they can it'd give be it like certain loads. silicon information, which yeah. they can then plant in it, if you like, within it, within its sort of food. Also, if you get them onto enemy you beaches, it, yeah. you'd have like a thousand digital cameras just yeah, well, that, taking they, they, around. They, if you get like you know Osama bin Laden or someone, they just don't, calling they don't the understand the information they've got. No, they don't. They're doing it. They just download the message. So they're not. You could torture them, and they won't be able to sort of give you the information because they wouldn't know what the information they had because they're just but like the crab, the crab, the crab, the first crab they downloaded, they just kept seeing the same picture of a big crab feeding it, which they- <laughs> Really? Yeah. Wow. That's what, like it's mother crab or something? Yeah. As just, it was memories of it as a child. But they're not in colour, presumably, because No, it's all in black and white. Black and white. It's just a digital camera because it's just a, they don't see it in black and white, so it's just like a, it's just like a, I don't know, I think it's, it's, I think it's burnt onto the retina or something. And, um, the only one that they kept were the ones they saw a lot of the time. Well, I mean, in a way, uh, some of the educating Ricky I've got for you today is, is on the similar lines. Right. Oh, you've uh, got to be impressed by that. You've got to no, be impressed no, no, by that. No, no, that's pretty good. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'm interested to see, you know, what, what they do what with they it. What they do with the, what the crab developments are. But yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, pr that's pretty good. Yeah. But, I mean, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that just digest just that information, because that's not even the most impressive one we found. I think it is. I suppose it's pretty impressive, but the next one's more, maybe more shocking. Okay, right. Well, let's play tune, and, and Ricky's got another experience. Okay. Oh. Love song. Classic on XFM. So that's the, that's the crabs that can, you can download their memories. But, um, but what about other animals that are in the sea, in that same sea, eating the stuff? Have they tested them yet? I don't know. I think it, they just took it on because their, um, biology, uh, so much to do with, I presume they could take up minerals and, you know, I don't know why. I don't know. But anyway, um, next one, uh, this is just on the horizons, um, uh, a bodybuilder, yeah? Um, uh, this married, is had another bodybuilder, married another bodybuilder, yeah. right, and they were pregnant. And, um, they had these tests and the baby was very large, but it was causing it pain, right, in the thing, right? And it, after this, it this, is this, this, it's this, almost bizarre in, like... Yeah, after the, w the, the female woke up pregnant after seven months and the baby... Was walking around. No, it forced its way out of the vagina. Oh no way! Yeah, it forced its way out, it, and it, it was because it, it had like, almost had like super strength. Like, and it was pulling her along by the umbilical cord, and that, uh, and it was, it was, it was a stone. <laughs> Extraordinary. That, no, that's freaky. It, I mean, you talk about yeah. freaky stuff. That's made up. <laughs> what? It wasn't pulling her along. It yeah, was. well, no, it was pretty. She could yeah. feel it. Exactly. And it was. Do you know what I mean? Like, just went. <laughs> And just sort of squeezed it. Just got out because it was ready. Because all the hormones. Because it thought stuff. it was ready. Oh God! Imagine that. Just waking up and finding that in the bottom of the bed. 
freak out, wouldn't it? Cause you'd think it was a nightmare initially. And it had hair and everything, didn't it? Yeah, cause all the hormones, there was like so hair, hair almost a beard. There was something in the week about, um, you know, you've got test tube babies and that now, haven't you? Mm. But they've, they've managed to do it. I only call after story. I knew story. he'd be more impressed by the crabs than that. He doesn't care if it's No, no, human. no, I am. I'm well, telling you, I'm telling you though that, um, there was something, I only caught after story cause it was busy, but, uh, there's something about babies being able to be born without having any people involved. Or something, it's like putting them in an oven or something and it's like a cake <laughs> and after a certain amount of time it's ready. <laughs> I, I love the of those in Argos for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas. Well, it's my first baby kit. Yeah. 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 It's Play-Doh, I think, that they can buy. <laughs> yeah. So well, what do you think of that then? The baby one. Yeah. I, l I prefer the crab one. Yeah. But the baby, I mean the baby thing's pretty, pretty horrible. Yeah. yeah. So it was bigger than the, than like the average. But, um, yeah. Um, both made up, we made those up. Yeah, both, both, both rubbish. They're both I mean, bullshit. they are both rubbish. Despite the fact they're both rubbish. Yeah. They're interesting. We made those up. Both those stupid stories up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine downloading a crab's memories and seeing its mum feeding it as a child. <laughs> Both uh, are rubbish. I had trouble, I had trouble. Yeah. I know I was gonna have trouble with, um, pushed its way out of the vagina. <laughs> yeah. I practiced that about 30 times yesterday with Stephen. I was going, I'm not gonna be able to do it, mate. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to say that. Yeah. <laughs> are you disappointed? A little bit. I, I mean, the baby one's a bit <laughs> sort of out there. Yeah. I wasn't really having, having that one. No. But, the, but the crab one, I, mm. I, I... See, now, what's interesting, I think, is it's a useful experiment, Carl. <laughs> I don't know what it's taught you about yourself, <laughs> but would you say that that's revealed to you a certain thing? I don't know, maybe that you're a bit gullible. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is maybe you shouldn't accept or swallow your hook, line, and sinker everything you read on the web. <laughs> You got to think maybe a valuable lesson. I there? feel bad because I, I feel I said to Steve, he won't be annoyed that we conned him. He'd be annoyed that they're actually not true. You'd love that crab thing to be true, wouldn't you? It wouldn't surprise me if it did happen one day. Sure. Yeah. So, and then he'd slap And it's uh, in the rake when I said about the crabs, you know, and I'm keeping them then. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. Right, well, I, I know what you're getting at. <laughs> with the, uh, with the educating Ricky, but, you know. Let's see, let's see. You've got, uh, three titles. Yeah. Uh, that I tease you with, different stories, you take your pick and I teach you something, that yeah. did happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit of venom. Uh, yeah, go on. First one is, um, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet that's bacon related, knowing you. <laughs> you've got, uh, uh, you've got enough is anus. Say that again. Enough is an anus. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. Well. But it's changed to enough is an anus. Yeah. And okay. you've got, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've also got, <clears throat> will it, will it be a bloke? Oh, oh no. Will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> what? Will it like a bloke or a woman? Will it? Yeah. <laughs> will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so they're your, they're your three stories okay, today. Okay, sounds exciting. Okay, stuff. well I'll have so Woolit, Woolit, Woolit well, like... we're gonna play a record now, Rick, surely. Yeah, yeah and, okay. Uh, and come back with Sorry about the crabs and the big baby. Right. <laughs> he went, he said, just look at the camera. He went, right, do you wanna know about MTV? So he went, well, it might be VH1. He went, right. It did rock busters after the break, some Genesis. <laughs> Oh, oh, I did. Oh. You didn't tell me she wanted all this. I thought you said, because I said, you just bring your own camera in mm. and we'll put it down on some tape and pass that on to her. Yeah. yeah. So now, this, I'm doing two jobs at once again. This is what I'm saying to you in the week. <laughs> I'm juggling jobs all the time. <laughs> I'm, oh, I tell um, you. Right, come on then. How much do I get? <laughs> He looked straight at the camera and said that. Right. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> three stories. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Look Enough is that. a nuss. And, uh. And, uh, we'll have that one then. That one? Yeah. Right, well, um. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe in palm reading and stuff? No. Yes. Sorry, yes. Yep, yeah, of yeah. course. Sorry, I forgot. Yes, of course we do. Mm -hmm. Right, well, there's a fella <coughs> who, um,. He, he used to do palm reading. No, yeah. But a lot of people, he found that when he went up to him in the street and said, do you want your palm reading? He was like, a lot of them were like, you know, oh, I've, I've you know, I'm a bit ashamed of my nails and stuff because mm. they're a labourer or, or they're a cleaner or mm. something like that. I know a lot of labourers are slightly embarrassed by their nails. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Yeah. So if you look at my bloody hands, Reg. <laughs> well. That's that hod carrying. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> Did I ever tell you that I got picked at school to <laughs> make tea and serve biscuits to old people because I've got good nails? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, go on. Go is on. there any more yeah. to the story? Oh, that's about it. I mean, they'd be, 
We used to do like, I think the ed teacher must have been getting something, maybe getting his mam in there for free or something in some people's home. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> he offered the kids at the school, uh, he said, right, all, all sit at your desk and put your hands on the table. <laughs> and everyone did. And he walked past me and he said, not bad, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, uh, you've got the afternoon off, you can uh, go and serve biscuits and tea to the old, old people. What did you say? I said, all right then. <coughs> Was that? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so these- yeah, so was, well, What did he do? He just sort of walked around and went, you all right, uh, do you want bourbons or die <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd get on with old people, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd love to see you, maybe Especially the senile one. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! No, but I'd love to see you on VH1, just do a link, and just go, you know, they, they've just played, uh, um, Robert Palmer, right? And it comes to you in a little park, and you just sit next to an old lady and go, all right? And you go, yeah, not too bad. And you go, what do you think of London? Crap, innit? And she goes, yeah, it's awful, innit? And you just have a talk, and you go, all right, well, she doesn't like it. In excess. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. I still think my idea is better. But mm -hmm. so, what are you going for then? Oh, you've picked one, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So this fella. So there's so there's there's palmists going around the streets. Yeah, he's going round and yeah, there's a lot of trying to give palm losing, readings. They're losing money, right. hand over fist. Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> they said uh, he, he's what he's done. He's he's reading people's uh, bottoms now. <laughs> Sorry, whoa, 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 you just, you just, I didn't quite follow that. He was a palm reader, that wasn't making money, so now he's going up to people in the street and saying, can I see your arse? Basically, yeah. So from, from, from being a palmist to an arsonist? Well, uh, they just, that's, that's what he does. He said the same sort of lines and that that you get on your hand, you get them on your, on your bottom, and, uh, he can read them. Right. Yeah, he's not a pervert or anything, or making up as he goes along. No, that's, that's it, that was that. So, sorry, if a man <laughs> came up to you in the street and said, can I have a look at your arse? Can I read your arse? <laughs> you'd, you'd drop your trousers, would you? <laughs> no, 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 if you went up to him and they said, oh, I'd rather you didn't because I'm a labourer, I've got bad fingernails. No, that's why I've seen, that's what the, a lot of labourers, they're showing their cleavage, you think, but actually they're having their arse right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. really a lot of, that's what it is. And then, right, So is that the end of the story? <laughs> yeah. But then because- That's it. Educating Ricky is there's a bloke who reads arses. <laughs> no, but You're then, a mentalist. But no, but What then, are you talking about? But then, do you know like now and again I come up with a little jokey line, thought yeah. I'd make an effort today for VH1 or MTV. Yeah. yeah. Little line there. Um, <laughs> don't worry, it won't last. It might just be a splash in the pan. Okay. Phil Collins next. Yes, <laughs> please. I hope aren't enjoying it as much as we are, but Carl uh, is continuing his, uh, what do they call this? A his screen test. Mm. Yeah, that was uh, let down by Radiohead. Carl, what, are you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I just think, think it's, it's not right, really, is it? I'm trying to do a job yeah. whilst trying to get another job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean? but well, a lot of your presenters are on MTV now. Yeah, but. They, 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 all of them have got Zane in their name, but, you know. Yeah, it's not, it's not really right, is it? Go on. But, right, so, uh. You we better get that idea. Carl Zane Pilkington. Educating Ricky, will we carry on? Yeah. Right, you've got left. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh. Yeah. Will it like fellas or will it like women? Well, you said wool before. Yeah, wool it. Go on then, I've wool it. Right, now this is similar to the one you were talking about before, right? They found out <laughs> that, um. <laughs> they. <laughs> yeah. Scientists, scientists. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have found out. 17th century? That, um, like now, uh, one in ten rams are gay. One in ten rams are gay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was like, wool it. That's how I could get that in. Um, <laughs> they got a load of gay and straight rams. Right. Right. Um, they worked out which were which first. They said, right, that's, that bunch there is a, is a gay bunch. They looked better, they just had more pride in their appearance. And, uh, yeah. and the other ones, you know, the straight ones, and then they gave them to this scientist and said, right, go on, do what you gotta do. And they took the brains out <laughs> of, of all of them. Just to check. And, um, they did tests on the brain and it worked out that They've got something smaller in the brain. The gay ones have got something in the brain that makes it smaller. And they said, right, well, that's probably how it's going to work on, on males. On, on like males and females and like humans. So you took from this that gays have smaller brains than straight people? No, there's something in the brain. Right, so if, go on. So if someone's saying, you know, oh, I'm a gay, or they don't, they're not sure or whatever, they will now be able to find out. 
So you can go to the doctor and <laughs> to find out if you're straight or gay. Is there any gay in my brain? Let's have a look. Do 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 do. You've got a little bit of a gay in you. Yes, a little bit of a gay in there. Yes, you've got the uh, you've well, got what, what you've got else? a little bent cell there. Well, that's that's why they did it anyway. I don't understand how they how they could differentiate which was straight and which were gay to begin with, before they then gave it to the scientist. Wasn't that what the scientists figured out? <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, how there's, could they tell? Were there's they one theory that it is genetically children? determined. There is one. <laughs> there is there is there is a theory that's genetically determined, but I, I, I don't think it's as easy as um, uh, pulling a sheep's brain apart and finding a little pink sort of like blob in there and going right. We've taken the guy out. and Now he's going to go and shag some ewes. I don't think it's that straightforward. Although there. Uh, uh, Homosexuality does occur at uh, a similar sort of rate in animals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you knew that, didn't you? So that's that's that one. I mean, <laughs> I just like the idea of a farmer figuring out which is straight and gay. Well, yeah. that one's wearing quite a camp-looking neckerchief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. thinking maybe yeah. it's gay. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the fact that they can. Uh, okay. Uh, that, that was <laughs> that was a big fan of Sophie Alex Baxter. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. They would. Uh, they put on ABBA and see which ones dance. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. how they. Which one? Yeah. Well, yeah. Put on like Barbra Streisand and see which ones sing along. <laughs> That is rubbish. What did I find out? <laughs> did, did, did you just say that is rubbish? No, I found out other other stuff in the week that didn't make the top three. Wow. Wow. Uh, we haven't even had to. This no. must be mediocre stuff. <laughs> this must be really bad. <laughs> yeah. But or it might be dubious. Go on. There's um there's a woman in Ireland yeah. who has been with a fella for eleven years. Yeah. Um she always saying to him, you know, when 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 are we gonna get married and that? And he's like, Oh, we don't need to. Uh, you know, we're happy and that, you know, like I am with Suzanne, it's like, there's no point, really. Yeah, yeah, Unless no. you have a kid, I don't think you need to, do you? Right. So, um, he was like, we'll do it in time, in time and all that. Anyway, he comes home from work one day, he says, oh, go on then, we'll get married. She was so shocked, her hair fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Wow. So. That's extraordinary. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I'm not marrying you, Baldy. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was so she was so shocked, so shocked her hair fell out. Yeah. I love the idea of it just going from yeah, to the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? That right, that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's, that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's rubbish. Next, you've also got. Um, it's weird, name? isn't it, Rick? That the stories <laughs> that we made up are <laughs> more plausible <laughs> yeah. than the facts. Yeah, actually I think us. we tried too hard. <laughs> I think we tried yeah, to that's what he's willing to believe. He's willing to believe <laughs> that a woman's hair fell out when her husband came out and said, let's get married then. Yeah. Oh, you're all romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, now yeah, then, here's a good one. Go on then. Right, in Dubai, this woman went to Dubai for her holiday. Mm. And, um, she was over there and apparently in the markets- Bit of spider? They, they sell lizards. Oh, go on. Right, just like for people to buy. Mm. So mm. she buys one, mm. not knowing that you're not really meant to take him out of the country. Sure. Um, puts it in a bag. Yeah. Uh, As you do. What have you? And um, then she gets to the airport when she's going on. She's thinking, I can't really leave it in my bag. Yeah. So she puts it on her head. On her head? Wears it as a hat. <laughs> she wore the lizard as a hat. Yeah. Um, <coughs> people on the plane were just like, yeah, everything's fine. You know, they're doing the cross checks and that. Yeah. Have you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. There's a woman great. there with a lizard hat. Um, <laughs> everything's going well. She gets off the plane at Manchester Airport. Um, lizard sticks its tongue out. Yeah. The air hostess says, what are you doing with that? She goes, I've had it. I've had it. Lizard said, I just found her in Dubai. <laughs> the, uh, they said, I've had this with me all, all journey. And they said, well, you shouldn't have done. And they took it off her. Yeah, I think that is true, actually. Yeah? Yeah. So what about that? Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah. That educated me. <laughs> right, what, any more? Well, what's that taught you? That's taught you, you know, be careful when smuggling <laughs> lizard yeah. back uh, some kind of hat. Yeah, don't, just say lizard, keep your tongue in, you <laughs> twat. <laughs> Uh, Not at the <laughs> customs officer. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what else? Anyone, have we anyone didn't quite make it. <laughs> Anything we, to declare? We, oh, <laughs> I've, got, I've, I've got a lizard on my head. <laughs> We've got an old saying. One, if you want that. Go on then. Are these ones? Sorry, are these ones that d didn't make the list. These are ones that didn't make it. Oh yeah. right. Because okay. I always, I always get more in than than I need to, just in case. Just think if someone's just tuned in now. Mm. Is Anders listening? Is uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson. Anderson. I've, got a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson. Uh, uh, Dicky Anderson. Go on. Uh, the Dick Machine, which <laughs> the big Dick, <laughs> the big Dick, which yeah. Uh, now this is interesting. It's I mean I think we're wearing him down, Ricky. I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitised to it. Yeah. Exactly. Always giving up. Him down. Mm. Always just giving up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you listen to this long enough and your standards will drop. Let's play a tune. Let's come back with some more. Um, a ride track from about. 
10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if, if you know, put me up my misery, f email in. It's just like a ride track from about 1990. And I can't, it's just the beginning. Uh -huh. Drive me mental. Ricky Dotravez at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, well, uh, half hour to go. You've done your screen test. Yeah. Reluctantly. <laughs> I, I think you, I think you had s such the wrong attitude. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? If, I've told you before, if things are meant to be, right? They'll happen. That's yeah. how I've got through my life, right? I'm 29 now. Yeah. Never played. Yeah? Well, yeah. 30, but the camera's still on. <laughs> <laughs> right? So. <laughs> <laughs> and everything I've done in my life, I've never sort of planned it. Do you know Is that I mean? how you storm through your uh, your exams? Well, look, <laughs> your look, at, look at the <laughs> look at the school play doing little donkey. I yeah. wasn't planning that day sure. to do the drums. It just on the night I couldn't help myself. And you stole the show. What when, happened? What do you mean? When when you know when all the kids were playing little donkey, I wasn't meant to be doing my drum set in that track. I was only meant to. I think I was doing We Three Kings or something. Uh -huh. But when they started doing it, the tune I couldn't help myself with the drumstick, just like tapping away. Right. At the at the drum. Yeah. And then when it came on, I was like, oh, and I started doing it, and like the teacher looked at, uh, looked over at me, and I was like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But she sort of gave me the nod as if to say, it's all right, carry on, it's, it's sounding good. <laughs> then after it, she went, you know, they love that, you can do that again tomorrow night. Yeah. So I got like an extra, extra part in the play and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That wasn't So planned. you were, so, so you were doing the drum part to We Three Kings over Little Donkey. Yeah. That's weird, that is like Fatboy Slim or something, isn't it, when they mix up. No. Well, no, you're still mashing oh. it up at the age of what, eight? Yeah. No. And that's what I'm saying. And that, is that planned. when, um, is that when, uh, someone was filming it and you could f hear your dad on the camcorder going, he looks like a twat? That's, that's the one, yeah. Oh. And that's why, maybe that's why I don't want to be on the telly, because I'll always have my dad's sort of echoing voice just saying, <laughs> he shouldn't be on there, he looks, <laughs> looks like a, that's it. So. So that's, that's why I'm a bit sort of nervous about this today. Really? You think it's sort of quite. Freudian in a way, sort of. Yeah. You're actually just case around Sarah. Well, plus I haven't got the look. I don't, I'm not pretending, right, that yeah. I should be on the telly. What's wrong be? with your look for VH1? It's not right. It's not Jono right. Jono was on VH1. Was he? Yes. So I'm going up against Jono. <laughs> <laughs> so He's gone now, he's moved on. Yeah, there you go, you see, another one who they gave a chance to. Yeah. And then he was like, you know, yeah, I can do that. It's, it's built up. Right, they built him up, you can do that as a job. And then they knocked him down. And he probably started eating. Well, I don't think you can <laughs> knock John down. He started eating! He started eating! Don't look at him now. Yeah. Right, oh. so that's what I'm saying. So if it's meant to be, right, it, whoever's gonna watch this tape, you know, yeah. uh, thanks for the offer and that. But, you know, time will tell. <laughs> Very wise, so, yeah. there you go. And I tell you what, actually, go right, on. It's, it's a bit funny, because we're looking on the web in the week out different sayings, and, uh, <laughs> do you know the saying- A round head does not an MTV presenter no, make. Yeah, no, spa- uh, what's that saying? Spark- <laughs> spark, oh. spark in the pan or something. Hey, Flash in the pan. Flash in the pan. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. That, that's a bit like what could happen to me, innit? Do you know what I mean? There I am trying to do my normal job, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then you bring me in here on a Saturday, next thing everyone's after me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then it doesn't work out, and yeah. I'm dropped. Yeah. And that same flash in a pan, do you know how it came about? No. Um, do you know like how years ago they used to dig for gold? Gold. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like a little pan. Yeah. And they'd put the soil in, and they'd rub the soil. Yeah, and it shone in the now sun. Now and again, it shone in the sun, and they yeah. got all excited, and were like, oh brilliant, some gold. And then they realised it was just the sun flashing in the pan. Yeah. And that's, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So again, that's a bit weird, I saw that saying in the week. Almost yeah. like a little thing saying, don't be getting carried away. Omen. So, well, makes you wonder. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Not really. So, so <laughs> tell you, things that make you wonder, you saw Darren Brown, what did he do? Darren oh, Brown, no, no, extraordinary. Yeah, you know, I told him, but I said, uh, um. You should uh, peep, to, for a lot of people don't realise who Darren Brown is, and he's, oh, we, I think, we, the best illusionist um, in the country. We went to, uh, Jonathan Ross's house, um, for his birthday. I didn't. Uh, no, me, uh, uh, me and Jane, and we went there, right, and there was lots of people there. And, uh, um, Darren Brown was there, and Jonathan got Darren Brown to and it was incredible. He did all these tricks, right? Um, <coughs> I mean, incredible. It was just amazing. Um, and he did one, um, with a bloke that was there, a uh, friend of Jonathan's, I think his name was, um, Ray. And, uh, he got him to give the pack, he said count the cards, and he counted out 52, 52. cards. <laughs> yeah? I mean, yeah, he went, think of any card in that pack. He didn't touch it yet, he's counted 52, it, it was in his hand, he said think of any card. He said what was it? He said three of swords or something. He went find it in the pack, couldn't find it, he said count the cards, there was 51. Right, and he couldn't find the card, and he had no idea. And we forgot about it, he went, oh it's gone wrong, and he forgot about it, he, and he kept, so he was going, I wonder where that card is, and he kept looking at it, he went, 
I found out that about a week ago, Ray went into hospital with an appendicitis, yeah, and the surgeon, as we said, there was stomach crumpled up, there was a little thing, and it was a card, it was the card that was in his thing causing appendicitis, and when he came out of surgery, there was a card from Darren Brown saying, was that your card? That's amazing, don't you think? I mean, this that's like a, incredible. This is thing and what, and then a crab went, I don't know what it is, it's a five of spades. <laughs> it's another wind up. Yeah. Yeah, well, see. <laughs> see, I'm not gonna believe anything anymore. But that's so good! If I, if I ever, You've learned a lesson! <laughs> yeah, but say, say if all this goes wrong now, right? Cry wolf and all that. Yeah. Imagine I get dropped by MTV. <laughs> Next see, that must be nasty, yeah? Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Ah! Right, they're short on firemen because they're always going on strike. <laughs> I answer the phone, it's you saying my house is on fire. I don't know what you're talking about now, so, Carl. If you I actually, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking no, about. I think somewhere along the line there, <laughs> Carl has been recruited by the fire brigade. <laughs> Did you leave that bit out in the story? Start again. Yeah, right, that's what right, I'm because saying. I just wound you up about crabs, babies pushing their way out of vaginas, yeah. and Darren Brown calling the pencil. Right, yeah. Little, uh, What's what's the saying about uh little acorns little, don't gather any ground. Cry uh, cry and wolf. You yeah. can take a fish to water and you can't you make it. Well, Do you know you know that saying? Um you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink. Do you know why? Um because it's neck's too long. No what? It's got an awkward neck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's correct. That is correct. Right, anyway, well, we've still got to come. Uh, <laughs> right, it's Carl. been bad today, I'm gonna apologise to people listening today because you might as well have been focused. Do you know do you know do you, have you heard the thing that a rolling stone gathers no moss? Yeah. You aware of that? Yeah. Do you know where that's from? Uh, Do you know in, where it's from? In Woodstock, right, the band used to go out and get this sort of like moss that used to grow there and it was sort of like slightly hallucinogenic, right? And they used to come back and they used to all go out, like, everyone was out there, mamas and papas were doing it, um, the doors, they all came back. But Mick Jagger and Keith Richards would never do it, but they'd smoke other people's. Yeah. A Rolling Stone never gathers his own moth. That was what it was. <laughs> Seriously, Carl! Right, that's so the we've truth! we've still got to come. Uh, <laughs> rock busters. Have you heard the saying, a fish in time saves nine? The, s the clues were- Have you heard that? That'll never get off the ground. <laughs> LZ. You've got- Have you heard that saying, out of the frying pan into the sauce pan? <laughs> You've also got- uh, Carl. Oh. I'm trying oh. to hold it together now. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, we're trying to teach you something, Carl. Yeah, but you're not. Why? Because at least my stuff that I tell you, if you go in, into a pub and told someone- what? what? There was a blind girl, she hit her head, she could see. What's that? Well, just don't, don't get down if your eyes are bad. <laughs> 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 no, go round head button right, thing. The tune, Carl, song, it's one of the tracks on the uh, best air guitar album in the world ever, Volume Two, which is one of the prizes on today's Rockbusters. And John Peel's favourite track. John Peel's favourite song of all time. And uh, so, Carl, have you got the answers for Rockbusters this week? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we've got uh, <laughs> the first clue. <laughs> You're upset, so Carl. Miserable. I, I'm a bit fed up today. The weather's. I knew when I was walking in today, though. That. I'd but that video. There's lots of there's lots of weather on that video, so they can whoever wins this can go home and see sort of the weather you were talking about. <laughs> uh, the first one was that'll never get off the ground. Uh, LZ. Yeah. The answer there was Led Zeppelin. So easy. Um, yeah, but I said that's here. There's always two easy ones and a difficult one. Go on. The third one was you'll get a load of bacon off them. Go on. That was L. Uh, long pigs, right. yeah, and then the second one was uh, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. Yeah, H H. Yeah, yeah, that was Ermin's Zermitz. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the three that's the three answers. I'm sure well, I'll let you give the prize this week. This Ermin's Zermitz. There's a lot of Ermin's Zermitz. That is genius, Carl. That is genius. Oh, Ermin's Zermitz. So There's so many people who are worthy of the um of the prizes, obviously. <laughs> I'd quite like to give the prize this week to, um, Tom <laughs> McGibbon. <laughs> Just because I like his name, I, I don't know if I've pronounced that right, but Tom McGibbon. Yeah. I like to give that to no, him. No, you shouldn't laugh at Tom's name. In, uh, he also lives in Bloxhall Road. <laughs> I don't know why I find that. <laughs> Tom McGibbon of Bloxhall Road. I don't know why. Well, you've made a mockery of, you've made a monkey of the man. Uh, poor, uh, poor old Gibbo. Yeah. That's yeah. The, and he's asking, uh, he's got a question there. What? Um, can Carl get rid of slugs? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm almost certain he can. Just so well, well to, um, if, to, if, uh, if he's been listening, if he was listening a few months ago, he would have known how to. Go on. Because I told you what slugs like. What? Getting in letterboxes. <laughs> How does that get rid of them? Put some stamps in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> they like, uh, no, they like, they like stamp glue. 
<laughs> so, yeah, and I was that how, how does that get rid of them? They keep coming back, won't they? <laughs> then he goes, I can't okay. believe it, we'd have to climb those boxes now, as a fellow leaving well, stamps out for us. You've won some prizes and I've sorted you. No, <laughs> how does that get rid of slugs? Leaving stamps out for them, their favourite food. Because the- It's like planting little lettuces, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends where he's got them, I thought he meant he's got them in his house. Okay. So, oh, to put stamps know. on the outside. They go. There's loads of stamps out here, lads. Let's leave this house. Right. So let's get out of this house. We've got. Uh, we've got one more. Go on. Uh, educating Ricky to go on. Quick then. I need, I need educating. Right. Uh, don't rub it too hard. You'll get a rasher. How was he going out with Darren Brown? You said something in the break. Oh, I have to say, yeah. Um, Darren Brown, who uh, we bumped into as well, and he did this incredible trick where he puts forty pounds down on the table. He says, "I can tell you which hand you've got a pound coin in." Uh, let's say five times out of five, you know. So I have a, a pound coin in one hand. I put it behind my back. I bring my hands out, and he can tell me every single time which hand it's in by asking questions, by doing various. Well, he doesn't things. ask, but he just goes, "Now you might have put it in that one. You might do the same again." But then you're an intelligent person. You're probably not going to go so it's in that one, and he does it every yeah. time. Yeah. It's it incredible. It's absolutely majestic. Oh, I, I mentioned this to Carl. Yeah. And well, Carl, you tell me how you think you could outwit Darren Brown. Because well, your dad used to do this trick, you well, told me. My dad used to play this. Yeah. Um. How old were you? Uh, I don't know, probably about ten. So you probably weren't as sharp as you were now then. Uh, so he used to play it and, and the way of telling what Andy's got it in, his hand looks bigger. So that's how you've got to do it. <laughs> that's how he did it then! Yeah. That's so how to catch Darren out, so ca- no, to catch Darren out- It was a bit different because he did it with golf balls, but- <laughs> But to catch it. Darren out, <laughs> Carl told me- Rick, He did it with a spud! To catch Darren out, yeah. the hand which hasn't got the coin in, just make it slightly bigger. <laughs> just make it, just like, extend it slightly so it's slightly larger, and that'll catch Darren out. You'll never be able to stop that. that's how he did it. Or, you- just put, put a pound in each hand- Okay. And wind him up, just go, no, you're wrong. You're yeah. a, you are brilliant, Carl. Yeah. Do this one. Do you, do, do you, uh, did your dad used to do the one where he takes your nose off, <laughs> off of your face and puts it between his fingers? Did, did you, you did you keep going to the doctors? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Right. You know how that's done? You know he's not actually taking your nose off. It's his thumb. Go it on. It's his thumb. Last on. one. Yeah. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rash out. It's been a mess today, <laughs> What do you mean, it's been a mess? It's been a mess. What has? This. What? The show? Yeah. How has it been any worse? It's just all over the place. There's no sort of, it's not tight, it's not tight like it generally is. Um, <laughs> and she'll be going away with this, thinking that's what the show would be like. She listens to MTV. the show, she knows it's a shambles every week, go on. Yeah. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Yeah. Do you know the saying, ham it up? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, go on, yeah. yeah. Right, well, do you know what it means? Well, it means to overact. Right. Well, years ago, w- with uh, with actors in musicals and stuff, mm. they'd, um, the actors used to look pretty ill on, on the stage because they didn't have proper makeup and that. Right. Right. So what they used to do uh, to make themselves look rub their face in pigs. Well, they got they got bacon, mm. rubbed it on the face, mm. and it made the face a bit sticky because of all the like you know the pig fat and bit of lard and stuff like that. Mm. And then they'd go and get some bricks. Bricks. Yeah, mm-hmm. house bricks. Rub them together, make some sort of red dust from the brick, mm. and then put the dust on the face. Mm. And the, the fat and the lard and that would make the dust stick mm. to the face. Mm. And um, they'd look well under the lights. And that's that's where the they same. They smell great as well. Yeah, well. Lovely. Everyone likes to smell of bacon. Mm. No, but so that's, that's the old uh, ham it up. That's where like that, that comes from. I'm, you know, I'm, if, if it's true, I'll start, I've no reason to think that it's not. So that's your third educating Ricky today. So, what have you learned? Nothing. Uh, Absolutely got, sod all. You've got your hamming it up. Yeah. Um, rams are gay. They, they know which ones are gay now. <laughs> now! <laughs> and, uh, At last, the, thank fella, God. the fella who can hand read um, an arse. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss the rest of the show, <laughs> what are you gonna make of that? <laughs> Have you just tuned in? <laughs> you are a maniac, Carl. So. And you've had your screen test. I reckon we'll be seeing you on MTV or VH1 in the near future. How much is it? How much? I mean, check out and so what do you reckon I'll get? Because I've, I've, you see, the annoying thing is I've just bought a flat in London. Yeah. In central London. Yeah. MTV's in Camden. Yeah. I wouldn't have bought in central London if I'd have known I'd had to go there. <laughs> that was to make my life easier so I could walk to work. So now I've got to go out of my way. So I need <laughs> to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> to be truthful, I'm not sure that the MTV gig is a certainty. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's pretending she's not sure, but she can't wait to sign you up. Yeah. I reckon you'd, you know, you, uh, maybe start off with a few little interstitials, just like, you know, what do you think, make of that, or Carl says, and, you know, 
few of them. I reckon you'll make a few, you know, a few why grand. Is it, why has it got to be music? Doesn't why can't music. it be? I think that idea on the animals is good. I can do film stuff. I can talk about films. <laughs> Elephant Man. Love that. Let's go on then, do a film review, quickly. Right, uh, right, well today, on, uh, film review, we're doing, uh, classic films, um, and today we're looking at, uh, Elephant Man, John Merrick, one of his, one of his better pieces of work. Um, it's a sad film, I, I, I've never really <laughs> been able to watch it all the way through. <laughs> Sorry, uh, John Merrick's better piece of work was him being the Elephant Man, played by John Hurt. Yeah. Go on then. Um, sad film, uh, when I was younger, Tell us a bit about it. What I is it about? It. Who's it's John about Merrick? It's about yeah, a fella. It's about a fella who's got a funny head. Right. Tell us this. And, um, you know, he lives in, uh, I think he lives in London, in like the, about the 1930s or something like that. And he's being picked on all the time and stuff. Mm. And, um, first time you watch it, you'll probably cry a bit. And then the second time you watch it, you're just sort of thinking, God, that would be bad. Sort of having a head like that being picked on all the time. And the third time you watch it, you might think, you know, oh, uh, how does he get his jumper on? <laughs> uh, then, I don't know, I'm probably bored of it the fourth time. <laughs> but, but it's well worth watching, so, uh, Elephant Man. Uh, Brilliant. Yeah, see it. Brilliant. I think if you want to get on TV, Carl, you'd be better as the subject <laughs> of maybe like an omnibus <laughs> documentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. Living with <laughs> Carl. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe one of those uh, appeals in Comic Relief. <laughs> oh, it'll go oh. to the people abroad, you know. There's some people in this country that need our help. <laughs> yeah. See you later. What is it? That's the Libertines. Time for heroes. Oh, yeah. So, Carl, what, what a great day. Carl, he's done his, uh, screen test. That's going back to, uh, MTV now, to look at the big wigs to have a look at. <laughs> Shouldn't mention wigs. Um, <laughs> we've had, uh, Rockbusters. We've had, uh, Educating Ricky. We had Educating Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Clary next week, so. Yeah. But you'll be back for the big Christmas, uh, Christmas spectacular. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's that. I've not been happy today. Go on, um, why? If someone's listened for the first time today, it's, it is normally better than this. It's not. No, it is. It is. No, I don't think it is. So, no. uh, so I, really, I really don't think it is. So that's that then. So I'll see you uh, in two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. All right, enjoy yourself. Cheers. Best of luck with MTV. All right, I'll uh, see you later. Okay. See ya. Cheers. Thanks,